What is the scariest oh heck no experience you've had? I work for a food delivery service and on one delivery I had to go about 2 miles down a one way road at about 10.30pm. There were banks on both sides so if I wanted to leave and another car came down the road I wouldn't be able to get out and would have to reverse backwards to a driveway. Houses around were pretty scattered and everyone's driveways were at least 100 yards from the houses. I took notice of this driving in because I'm a woman and had my guard up. I get to the address which is an abandoned home with no lights and the driveway is blocked off with boards and immediately the hair on the back of my neck stood up. It was a dead end and the nearest house was about 700-800 yards away. I parked and locked my doors and called the customer and they said they were in the trailer across the street and they would come out to meet me. There was no trailer across the street at all, but this dude came off of a dirt trail and started walking up to my car. As they were coming towards me the guy asked if I could wait about 5 minutes for his friend to come back with a tip for me. The bill was already paid, and I politely declined saying that I had to go back to work out of being scared. He then got a phone call and his little words were yeah bruh, can we make this happen? Are you on the road or what? I put the food on the ground said goodbye and booked it out of there so quick you could probably see dust behind me. That incident taught me to always trust my gut and to never worry about the tip. I could have just been extremely paranoid but I feel like I got lucky that time. Always trust your gut. Better safe than sorry and all that. But his friend was probably bringing weed. LOL. When I was 10 or so, I woke up before everyone in the house. It was like 7am and decided I would sneak into the pool. I was waist deep in the water before I saw the alligator on the other side of the pool. I've posted this before somewhere but I used to work the night shift all the time, and basically shifted my whole sleep schedule over to that, wake up 7pm everyday day. It was fine save for the fact that every now and then I'd have to do my grocery shopping at like 10pm, which wouldn't be so bad if I also didn't have epilspy which means I can't legally drive. So I bike everywhere, usually listening to podcasts on the way. One day I was on my way home from shopping and got to my driveway. It was one of those super long rural driveways that so many creepy pasta people will go into a long 4 page long description of how creepy it is. It wasn't creepy, really, just secluded. Anyway, it's a long drive through the woods and I'm used to all kinds of animals jumping out and running by as I'm going down the road. But this day something felt off. I saw an animal jump out into the middle of the drive and I just stopped waiting for it to scurry off. I honestly thought it was a deer, because they're stupid and everywhere. But then my lights caught the eye shine and I realized it was way I I I I too low to be a deer. My next thought was, oh great it's one of the coyotes that we keep seeing in the backyard. I unplugged my headphones and turned my music up as loud as it'll go. I had a Lumia 635, which had a loud as freak speaker. I started stomping my feet and trying to scare the dumb coyote out. I was shining my lights out on it. It just stood there, staring at me, and then it got low to the ground. Low to the ground and sulked towards me. I realized immediately this was not a deer or coyote or even a near hood dog escaped. It was a freaking mountain lion that was now slowly approaching me. I backed my way out of the driveway, making sure not to lose eye contact with the animal, and then busted my butt down the hill to my job. Only place open at that hour within immediate biking distance. I wasn't 100% certain it was a mountain lion at seeing it skulk. I just knew it was not any of the animals I'm used to seeing and that it was acting aggressive defensive towards me being there. The only reason I know it was a mountain lion was as I turned the corner on the top of the hill. I tilted my head to make sure nothing was following me to see another, maybe the same one sitting on a rock wall literally 4 feet away from me. It normally takes me 30 minutes to get to work. It took me only 10 minutes that day. Early one morning I was leaving a hotel and a man followed me to my car. I jumped in quickly and locked the doors as my butt was hitting the seat. He knocked on my window and I let it down only about 2 inches. He tried his best to convince me I dropped a key in the parking lot and should get out and get it. It was a ploy and I knew it. I finally looked him in the eye and said, no, not me. He knew I meant that he wasn't getting me. I wasn't scared, but instead furious. 
I left before he did and hurried to get onto the interstate. With heavy 5 lane traffic he came flying up behind me and then right before slamming into me he darted left between cars, almost causing an accident. I couldn't report him because I left so quickly and didn't get his plate number. I never stayed at that hotel again while traveling that route. That's terrifying. I'm about to travel by myself. After reading this, I have to go buy some pepper spray. Anyone who has some recommendations they'd like to share, I'd appreciate it. I was home alone one day and heard someone walking on the roof. I literally almost crapped my pants. Found out later that the roofers were coming that afternoon. Mum forgot to tell me. I hear that sound all the time. At first I was worried, then I was puzzled. I eventually realized it's birds. They make a big thud when they land, just as loud as a person's footfall. Worked at a coffee shop, one of the baristas was cleaning the bathroom. Hear her literally yell, yep she comes to get me, saying I need to take care of a weird looking spider. I love bugs, and get kind of excited to catch and release the weird looking spider outside. Walk into the bathroom and it's not a spider, it's a freaking scorpion. I can take care of the spiders, but not the long tail pinchy ones. I was around 11-12, in a public restroom that had a couple stalls. Just sat down to start my pedal when the woman in the next stall asked if I could pass her some toilet paper. Sure, no problem, we've all been there. When I pass it under the divider, she ended up stroking my finger as she's taking the paper. Her index finger lingering on me. I didn't think anything of it, it's an awkward pass. I finish up, flush and step out of the stall to go wash my hands. As I'm starting scrubbing, she steps out of her stall. Normal looking 40ish woman. Just looks like someone's mom. She starts washing her hands and just locks eyes with me in the mirror. It was only about 3 seconds in total. But I remember how her smile subtly went from generic to something a little darker. It was hard to explain, but I felt like she wanted to eat me. Every possible spot of skin that could get goosebumps stood to attention. Instinct told me to GTFO of that bathroom so I bolted. Could have been nothing, could have been a childish dramatic projection, but I swear that bee was going to chew on me. I'm totally getting a witch. Roll doll style. Vibe from your story. I stepped into an elevator on the 8th floor of the hotel and hit the 10th floor button. Right before the doors closed a group of at least 15 people jammed themselves in while I'm standing in the back corner. The elevator was rated for 10 adults. Instead of going up, the elevator slowly started to go down. After half a floor, the elevator went into free fall for roughly 2 floors until the emergency cable caught. I thought I was going to die that day. Room for one more honey. A car accident in my early 20s. I was driving around a bend under a freeway on my last lesson before going for my probationary license when a car driving at least 70 km per hour over the limit, 160 km per hour in a 90 km per hour zone, about 100 miles per hour in a 55 zone, smashed into my rear driver's side. The car I was driving spun out of control and smashed into an underpass. My teacher and I were both desperately lucky to be alive though we both sustained serious injuries. Well did you get your probationary license? I was in the a very very ill from pneumonia. Think 4 staff in the cubicle with me the entire time for about an hour while they diagnosed what was wrong with me. I originally went to urgent care and sat in the waiting room for 45 minutes and the moment they tridged me, they sent me to the air. Anyway, after about an hour and a max of 10 people in working on me at once, I had an IV in each arm and everyone left. I was completely alone, still going in and out of consciousness because of low O2 sat. Whoops, turns out I'm allergic to one of the antibiotics. By the time I noticed, my hands and wrists were too swollen to hit the call nurse button and so I was just flailing my sausage arms at the equipment as hard as I could. Not very, until someone came to check on me. It took the staff maybe 30s to figure out what was wrong with me once they came in, but it was some of the longest 30s of my life because I couldn't communicate with them and I had come out of the frying pan and into the fire. At least I knew it was anaphylaxis and wasn't just suddenly dying from. Yikes, you were very lucky. I did community service at the local hospital. One of my duties were to deliver the food menus early morning to every patient so that meant starting my rounds around 5-6am. 
The first floor was IQ and it was still fairly dark around that time. I walked into a patient's room and all the blinds were shut and the only light that lit the room came from the equipment she was hooked up to. I wasn't sure if she was awake or not and so I announced myself and waited for a response. Sometimes patients were unable to make meal choices and so I would stick around to help them out. I stood there for a couple seconds and saw her eyes closed shut, thinking she was still asleep. I made my way towards the door. Halfway through, with my back towards her, I hear her say, make sure they don't follow you out. I stopped in my tracks and slowly turned around and saw that her eyes were still closed and quickly ran the frick out of there. There was no one in that room except her. I bet she laughed her butt off after you left. Trekking through the woods behind my friend's house while playing manhunt. Midnight in December. No sensible reason for anyone to be outside. Snow everywhere. I'm walking along and approach this ramshackle cabin crack house. Hear a faint squeaking of a swing set moving back and forth. Audibly to my friend, who was with me, I say, what the frick is that? Dead. Fricking. Silence ensues. The swing stops moving the minute I stop talking. I'm not known for my running but I think I broke land speed records that day. When I was about 10 years old, we'd been on holiday and I'd spent every day going down to the local pool. There was a friendly lifeguard there, probably early 20s and maybe a little too friendly to a 10 year old, often commenting on how I looked in my bathing suit, etc. Me and my friend were super innocent and just thought he was nice but a bit weird. Anyway it got to the last day of the holidays and he knew I was leaving. The pool was busy and I was playing at the deep end. All of a sudden there was a big splash and the lifeguard's face popped up right beside me, really close. I remember it so clearly. He smiled at me and said it's time. I just yelped and got the frick out of the pool and ran away, literally never to return again. I don't know what he meant by it's time but some instinctive part of me knew this was wrong. It wasn't until years later I saw just how sinister and gross that was. I'm so glad I ran. Got into a car with a friend, did not realize she was very high until she almost killed us blowing through a red light, made her pull the frick over and I drove us home suspended license or not I was not ready to die like that. Last week when I started the BBQ, went inside to grab the things, and came back out to see the entire grill and top of the tank entirely engulfed in flames. Apparently we had a leak we didn't notice. I managed to throw water on the tank and cut the flames ASAP so thankfully no real damage but I think I'm done BB Ching for the year. Just put a fire extinguisher next to the grill before you start it. Don't use water. I just recently moved out of the north. Where I lived in particular happened to be a very tick infested place some seasons. Well one day I pulled a huge one off my dog, grabbed an old shoe and flattened that bugger. When I lifted up the shoe I noticed a good amount of blood moving all strange like. Upon closer investigation it turned out to be little microscopic babies moving around. It gave me the most oh heck no feeling I've probably had. I ended up torching the concrete for like a minute straight. Took care of the situation quite well. Reminds me of the time I stepped on a spider as a kid, and a million babies ran in all directions when I lifted my foot. I've never killed another spider in my life. I was riding the train after a soccer game with my brother and his wife and was standing in a compartment. A very visibly audibly intoxicated woman was sitting on the floor by herself. She complimented my shoes, not expensive shoes, and was slurring every word. I told her they were from Nordstrom's on sale as a joke, and turned away from said drunk woman. A man was standing nearby and lifted his shoe up and said, what about mine to which people chuckled. I thought he was just going for a joke but he kept watching her. Once we got to a stop and it was called over the intercom, she got up to leave. The man looked left, then right, and then got off train with her. I practice social work and have worked in victims advocacy for some time. This was every bad vibe I needed. I said, oh heck no and got off at this stop, way ahead of my actual stop. My sister-in-law pushed my brother onto the platform and they both followed me, unsure as to why I left the train. The man was 20 feet ahead with his arm around this woman as she stumbled along the platform. I walked up and said, I just have to let you know, you are acting exactly like a predator and are giving off a lot of red flags. He went on to explain his innocence, that he has daughter her age, 
and that, and I quote, I wish someone would be this protective of my daughter. We separated the two. My sister-in-law was walking with the woman and supporting her from falling. My brother and I kindly escorted the man away. When we met back up, the woman had flagged down a driver in the parking lot that she said was her boyfriend. She got in the car and rode off. I am pretty certain we prevented a sexual assault that day. Was out wading with my cast net to catch some mullet for fishing. As I was out there a group of bobcats had congregated around my bucket of bait as some jumped out and they were eating them. I stayed out there for a good hour and they knocked over my bucket and ate all the mullet I already caught. Poor babies were hungry and you ever so nicely left them an easy access bucket of fish. How good of you sir. When I was in Mexico, I was staying on a decent sized resort with a good amount of wildlife. When we first arrived, an employee warned us about the possibly aggressive wildlife, spider monkeys, lizards, fish, etc, on the trails and in the waters. These trails had cenotes, gardens, historical pieces and a bunch of other cool stuff. I wanted to see a pre-Hispanic oven offered as a historical piece. So I walk down a dirt road in the furthest corner of the resort. Resort is about 6-7 square miles to see this oven. On my way out, at least 30 of these freaking lizards were lined up making all sorts of sounds at me, with their necks all flared up and crap. Also, at the resort they told us to stay on the trails because of other potentially dangerous wildlife. But I was cornered by 30 of these freaking things in nothing but wet shorts and sandals. How do you prepare someone for a situation like that? I said frick the trails and I ran through those woods faster than I have ever ran before. Not quite sure what those lil guys wanted from me. They wanted to frick you. Male lizards blow up their throat neck for the same reason that male birds show off their bright and beautiful feathers. To attract a mate. You were about to get gangbanged by 30 lizards. I was around 8 on vacation at a beach. Me and my brother were having a lot of fun, but near sunset my dad just yells at us to get out of the water and run for the little apartment we were staying at. We asked him why and he just said one thing, horseflies. Cut to one minute later where all of us are just running as fast as we could dodging these giant evil bug pieces of crap while they just made huge buzzing sounds and tried to rip our flesh off. My little 8 year old brain probably made it extra dramatic but dang those things are terrifying. Those dang things are no joke. They don't bite, they punch a hole and slurp out your insides. Was watching TV, sitting on my couch when I saw the silhouettes of 3 me, one with a gun drawn, walking up to my door. They knocked on my door. I didn't respond and sat there with my crappy little shotgun. They started knocking loudly, I guess to make sure if anyone was home. Then they started to pry open the door with a crowbar. I called the police, but by the time they arrived, the dudes were gone. The men who were trying to break in were standing next to a broken window the entire time. Thank goodness you didn't have to end up shooting one of your clones. I lived in an old Saddam bunker while in Iraq. We were using it as a patrol base. The lowest level had almost completely filled with water. About 20 feet from the landing was a camp toilet we installed, so we wouldn't have to put on body armor to go to the bathroom. Well, it's about 3 in the morning, I'm half asleep because I had to answer nature's call and use this stupid toilet. My flashlight died while I was in there and I could hear water dripping from the ceiling of that flooded floor. I know now there wasn't anything to worry about, and I knew I needed to change the dang batteries. But at that moment I was scared shitless and that became one of the fastest bathroom breaks I've ever had. Imagine drowning in a bathroom in the dark. That's some nightmare fuel. A little bit different than what's been posted so far, but frick it. I got involved with someone who turned out to have a history of domestic violence. When he told me about it, he said his ex knew how to push his buttons, and he smacked her after a bad day at work. Later, he said he tried committing suicide because he didn't want to be like his super abusive father. Fast forward in he and his ex's relationship and she eventually left with a moving truck while he was at work, which he called her a C for and tried to sue her for some stuff she supposedly took and her half of and paid rent due for bailing on their lease. He hasn't hit me, but things got emotionally abusive to the point I don't use the term gaslighting as lightly anymore. Since he did it often enough that I was beginning to question my own sanity, I blocked his phone and got in touch with his ex. 
basically asked her how she managed to get away from him and keep it that way. We chatted a bit. Turns out she filed two police reports. One when he hit her, and another for fear on attempts on her life because he was planning to kill her. She said nothing about his suicide which, going by what he told me, they were still living together when he made that attempt. After we chatted, I had a dental appointment I needed to go to. The news on the waiting room's TV was reporting on how often abusees of domestic violence are murdered by their abuser. Unfortunately, dude knows where I live and work. I've thought about getting a restraining order, but it might get him fired if it's granted. In that case, he might think I'm the reason why he was fired depending on what he's told, which would make things a lot worse. Make a paper trail with the police and with your workplace. If you do decide to file an RO, this will make it easier. I was 4 years old and I lived with my grandparents at the time. My grandparents house was not fully developed and bugs and spiders would come in the showers and kitchen. When I was finished doing my business in the bathroom, I tried to go back outside again but there was huge snake in the kitchen so I couldn't get past. All I was doing was screaming until someone heard me. Worked in a large store, there was a guy that had been hanging around my department. He was there quite frequently. I remembered him because he was always wearing the same baby blue basketball shorts. He never talked to me. I would just notice him pass through. We had registers in our department. I walked from one side of the department to the register. And when I get to the register, I notice this guy go past me on my right. Two co-workers at the register had this look on their face. They said he was right behind me. Like his face and my hair right behind me. I had no clue. There was someone that close to me, and I never knew it. Normally, I'm pretty aware of my surroundings, but the fact that that guy got so close to me and I didn't have a clue creeped me out. A week or so later, he was on the opposite side of an aisle, where my department manager caught him beating his meat, in the middle of a busy store. Apparently, I was the reason he had been hanging around our department. I had a stalker and didn't even know it. Obviously, he was arrested for jerking it in public. I only saw him once after that. I saw him walking down the highway a few weeks later, still in the baby blue basketball shorts. Never saw him after that. Thank god. I think he may have been homeless. Comma never saw him after that. Thank god. Doesn't mean he doesn't see you. I went to get one of my pals to study for an exam saw him having sex with his stepsister in something like a fursuit. The worst thing I haven't told him yet that I know. So me and my cousin both have a love for all things horror movie and paranormal related stuff. Well at the time he lived in hilly woodsy Valdosta Georgia in a two story house with his dad, my uncle, his mom and younger sister and brother. Well we stopped there to caravan with them on our way to family reunion in Dothan, Alabama. But frick nowhere. Well the night we got in me and my cousin started sharing all the paranormal and horror related stuff we had learned since we had seen each other last. Well eventually we ended up in his attic den room which is the only room on the second floor. It's carpeted and has a chair, a computer, daybed, TV and my cousin's game systems. But it also has four different recessed movable panels that when moved hide what are essentially storage spaces. Well this visit was the first time I ever moved one of the panels to see what was behind it. That night me and my cuz convinced my aunt to use her credit card to pay to watch a horror movie on his 360 in the attic room. This is unrelated but the movie was a Spanish horror movie I believe, and featured a family that moved into a house with a maze in the backyard with a well at the center. I don't remember much else if you know it please tell me. Well we finished the movie probably around 230 in the morning and were tired and decided to sleep in the attic room. We made ourselves comfortable for sleep and my cuz turned the TV over to some show about Alaska, while I tried to sleep on the daybed. Well a few minutes go by and all of a sudden we heard a sound like someone had taken a deep, long, rattly and raspy human breath. And the breath noise came from the area behind the daybed. And the daybed sits against the a part of the wall of the attic room with two of those four storage rooms behind it. Once I heard it my cuz slowly turned to me, with a look on his face like he had shat his pantaloons. To ask if I had heard the noise too. I had. We didn't get much sleep after that. We still talk about it to this day because there are nowhere vents or anything in that attic room that could have made that noise. It still sends a shiver down my spine. 
I was staying alone in a hotel room in advance of a friend's wedding. It was my first time traveling alone and since the wedding was in San Jose and I live in LA so I was about 8 hours from home to add to it. Around 2am I hear someone trying to use a key in my door and pounding on it frantically to try to get in. That was a really huge oh heck no moment for me. Luckily enough for me I had experience working in a hotel that was a little too free with their master key so I'd engage the deadbolt on my door whenever I was in it. I was so glad for that deadbolt that night. Good thinking on the deadbolt. I always use them. 2. Stayed in a hotel one time, where they had an issue with the locks engaging. If the door wasn't pulled all the way shut, someone figured this out, and would come in and rob the room, occasionally with people sleeping inside. I have to. The first happened when I was in kindergarten. I used to walk to school with some of the other kids in the neighborhood. We literally lived less than a block from the school. One day I had to walk by myself because the other two kids were on vacation or sick or something. Either way, I'm walking home, and a man pulls up beside me and starts driving real slow along with me asking me to get in, that he would give me a ride. Ect. I kept telling him no, I was fine, I lived right there, my parents were expecting me. He didn't leave me alone until I made it to my neighborhood and I booked it from there to my house. Major stranger danger vibes. I still remember how he made me feel very scared and not at all like a good citizen trying to help a small child walking alone. The second was when I was 16. My mother and I had a flat tire on the interstate and no jack. This was pre-cell phone days mind you. So we're sitting on the side on the interstate, hoping someone will see our flashes and pull over to help us. A car pulled over in front of us and a man got out of the car and started walking to us. Never said hello, never smiled, never indicated in any way that he was friendly. He had a buck knife on his belt. If you're from the south, or do any hunting you know what this is. And as he got close to us, his hand went to that knife and he flipped the holster strap open. About that time a jeep full of teenage boys stopped right in between us and him. The boys piled out. Helped us with the tire and that guy turned around and left without ever saying a word. If you're reading this, you can drive on a flat tire. Don't end up in bad situations. Cars are easily replaceable. Use it until it won't move anymore. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.